So recently I've come across a couple articles of people talking about is this the end of the financial independence, early retirement uh, movement? Is this going to change it? Uh, can you actually do this? during a recession and I just wanted to kind of go over today is this going to make the whole fire movement better or is it going to make it worse could this be the end of it now honestly I don't think this is going to end the fire movement right off the bat but it will definitely change it it will change how people structure um, their whole lives their whole financial plan their goals how they you know set everything up it is going to change that um, and it's also going to make people go back to the principles and kind of take a less risky approach to this. So right off the bat, if you don't know what the FIRE movement is, it's pretty much the financial independence retire early movement, which is the idea of spending less, earning more, and then investing the difference wisely. You build up enough money and you can live off that for the rest of your life. You quit your job early in your 20s, 30s, 50s. Uh, depending on when you find out about this, you can usually do it in under 10 years. If you're going really extreme, you can do it in three to five years. Um, so this is something that I've been into for a couple years now, and I know a lot of people have been into this. It's really been growing recently. And when the economy is simply just going up and up and up, and it's 10%, 15%, 20%, every year, this can be something that's really appealing to a lot of people. And it's not all that hard uh, to do really when the economy is going like this. But this is really going to show uh, any flaws that the fire movement has allowed to come into them when they're structuring their whole financial plan around low cost index funds, and they're going to continue to grow. Um, and when that drops off, 30, 40%, are you still willing to withdraw that money and take that loss? Um, so it's really gonna change how people are structuring things. I think this is actually gonna grow the fire movement a lot as people are learning the necessity of being frugal in that you can't just live paycheck to paycheck because when that paycheck disappears for one week or two weeks or a month or three months, you need that emergency fund. And I think that's really gonna wake people up to the idea that you can't just spend everything as soon as you get it like people are doing right now. You need to be able to have that emergency fund of I would say minimum of like six months in an emergency fund, something that you can get to in cash so that when something like this happens, you can wait it out, it will not ruin you and you can continue to earn money different ways so that you can make up for that and even grow it uh, and you're not living like 100% off that, but I think this is gonna really grow the house hacking movement and also just the, the frugal living movement, which will lead people to fire and realizing that making a few little sacrifices will make their life so much easier during the next recession. And uh, there was that poll that, you know, so many Americans didn't have 400 bucks for an emergency. Right now, all those people who are in uh, low paying jobs are really getting hit right now. And I think this is a, a great opportunity to kind of show why this is so important. And if you're in a position where you have taken those steps to help yourself out, that you can help those who didn't realize that they needed money or didn't have the, you know, the discipline to save or whatever, and you can show them, hey, I made these steps, I made these changes in my life, and I can help you right now, but if I do help you, you need to you know, take those steps, take that initiative to change your own life and help yourself in the future. So I think this is actually gonna be something that ends up helping the FIRE movement overall and just helping people be less reliant on their job, less reliant on the government and getting a check from the government. I think this is something that a lot of people don't wanna be reliant on their jobs. They don't wanna have that fear of what happens if there's a pandemic and you know my job goes away or just it gets taken over by a robot. You shouldn't have to be reliant on your jobs. And like I've talked about before, um, even if you love your job, you absolutely love it. And a lot of people are saying, I don't want to retire early. I love what I do. What happens if what you do just goes away? You know? Uh, so that's why I think everybody should be seeking financial independence and financial freedom in their 20s so that they have the freedom to do what they want. Or if it all goes away, they're fine. They can focus on growing themselves, on helping others around them uh, and have the resources to do that and not be stressed out while they're trying to do that. I think this is actually gonna change how people think about FIRE overall and kind of shift it into more of that that four hour work week, that freedom while still kind of working and going from you know trying to reach 
early retirement. And you know, what's the idea of reaching early retirement? It's really freedom, right? So you should be chasing more financial independence and having a big security blanket so a recession has no effect on you and finding your dream job and finding other work, side hustles, diversifying, and then find ways to start earning multiple streams of income on things that are recession proof and really start diversifying yourself. I know for me personally, I never wanted to get to that 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 million dollars in the bank or the 1.2 or 2.8 or whatever your number is uh, for lean fire or fat fire, whatever you're going for. Um, that's not really how I like to structure my, my, my process. I like to look at it as a, a finding what I want to do and finding how to do that from home when I want to do it uh, and enough passive income from enough different places that if this one stops, this one will cover my bills. If that one stops, that one will cover my bills and trying to diversify that way because most people, if you're going for fire, uh, you don't actually wanna retire early. I'm just telling you right now, you don't wanna do it. Once you retire for a month, if you're one of those go-getter people who just set their whole life up for something and you've been working and working and working, you might wanna enjoy that for a while, but then you're gonna get bored because you're probably a go-getter. Um, so I think instead of trying to aim for that end goal of getting that certain amount of money and then quitting your job and be like, what do I do now? I think it's finding ways to jump out of your job sooner so you can enjoy your 20s, you're not missing out your 20s, so that you can enjoy your 30s and the rest of your life. You're enjoying the whole process all the way through, leaving your job a little bit early, which I know some people are saying, you don't wanna leave your job early in case something like this happens. You can, if you're doing things like house hacking, you have these different streams of income coming in. So like the, the side hustle, um, small real estate investment while still doing other stuff uh, and finding different ways to, to set up these different side businesses that will all pay you a little bit and having a few different streams uh, that are really diversifying that way as opposed to but diversifying in the stock market. Even though I do think the stock market is still gonna be like a long term, it's definitely gonna be a good way to invest. Uh, it's just for me, it's not what I find to be exciting. Um, so that's just how I think it's gonna change a little bit. People will start finding what are those essential jobs, how can I do them from home, and instead of looking for the high paying job, they're gonna look for the job that they can do from home. People are gonna realize that working from homes, um, you know, you can do that with almost any job so that nobody's gonna wanna go back to work. So I think that's gonna be the shift. People are gonna find different ways to make money online right now. And I think like, like podcasting is gonna be a huge thing. Uh, it's continuing to grow, and I think right now it's actually gonna grow a lot uh, because I know I'm, listening to a lot more stuff other people are, whether that's educational or entertainment. Uh, I think that's just really growing industry. So focusing on how to edit that or how to produce it or how to uh, you know like make your own about whatever topic, people are gonna start experimenting with that stuff a lot more and trying to find out different ways to earn income even if they can't go out that door because they don't wanna be reliant on anybody else again to be turning themselves into businesses. <sighs> I gotta get a, like, a, like a lapel mic or something, this is ridiculous. I think this will also help out the whole house hacking community and like the whole idea of house hacking in general and how that kind of recession proofs your financial uh, like investment. So uh, not like the stock market where you have really no control over what's going on outside. You can't, once you invest that money, you can't really control it all that much, which is personally why I don't love investing in the stock market. Whereas house hacking, you do have a lot more uh, direct control over your investment. Now, there is talks of things, uh, you know, like people not paying rent, but if you were in that those first one or two house hacks, you can definitely withstand that, and especially if you're having emergency funds. No matter what your way of investing is, you should definitely be having a six month to a year runway of you know, living expenses and each property should have six months to a year of, uh, you know, like mortgage payments just sitting to the side so that if nobody pays for an entire year, you'll still be fine. Now, this might take some time to build up this fund, but that should really be the first thing so that you're not investing everything. You're not leveraging yourself to the hilt, which is how a lot of people get in trouble when they're real estate investing is they overextend themselves and then they end up with problems. If you're doing a flip and you have a bunch of flips going on and then the market just stops, you can be overextended and have too much capital out there and you end up having to take a loss or if you buy properties because you think that the market's just gonna continue to go up and you can sell it in a few years and it'll be worth 50,000, 100,000 more, 
that's fine when everything's going good, but you need to make sure that you have the good, right fundamentals of buying something that's gonna make money every single month and you're gonna be able to have control over that. You're gonna have good tenants. Uh, right now, if you're screening tenants, you get people who have good jobs that they can work from home. Uh, I realize this isn't for everybody, but for me, this is why I think house hacking is such a valuable thing. It's really almost recession proof. So even though we might end up missing some rent or the Airbnb prices have dropped almost in half, I just think that it's a lot safer to have that money coming in as opposed to all those other people who simply have money going out. That way you're in the position where if they don't pay you, the worst case scenario is you end up actually paying your mortgage like for the first time since you bought the house, you actually have to pay for your living expenses. So the worst case scenario is you're in the same boat as the rest of the world. That's what I got. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments down below in the comments on what you think is gonna happen to the fire movement. What changes uh, do you expect to see in the future? And as always, I should come up with an ending, probably.